And we are back on the bridge. And finally, let's use the map and see the Coronas Expanse. Okay, so this is a whole new me mechanic, obviously. The events of Warhammer 40k, Rogue Trader, take place in the vast region of space known as the Cronus Expanse. This sector is composed of numerous star systems, many of which you will get a chance to visit. You will find yourself scouring the void in search of routes leading to new uncharted systems, discovering more routes as you explore the Expanse. What you see before you is the map of one such system, because we can't yet leave it. Each star system contains objects you can interact with. Such objects are marked as points of interest. Move your ship to a point of interest, then click left mouse button to, on it to initiate the event or open the planet view. Okay, so we have Rykad Minoris for the New Blood Machine Spirit Keeper and land on Rykad Minoris. That was, I think, the main planet that pretty much everything goes down on. Like, it's the main planet in this system. There was a penal colony planet, as well as the astropathic station? No, a... the, na the navigator station is supposed to be here. Okay, so visit Rykadia Philia the prison planetoid. That is probably this one. Rykad Minoris, which is their main planet that everyone lives on. And then this must be... No information given, but that must be the navigator planet. And then we have our other planets that we could also explore. So the question then is, should we go straight to the main quest planets. Ooh, we have various stuff here. People. Okay, I'm going to read through what all of these are. I'm going to kind of look at the whole UI because I don't know what all of this is yet. The foundation of any rule or our workers and soldiers, a faceless and nameless mass of rank and file. In the eyes of the Imperium, they are merely a resource, easily procurable and renewable. Currently, we have zero people. Seems like a problem. Provisions. Whether made from corpse starch, ugh, plant matter, or <laughs> fermented fungal mold, these rations provide colonists with sustenance needed to work for the good of the Imperium. Chemicals. Numerous substances contain remarkable powers. Magi alchemies known know how to awaken such powers, and the fruits of this labor are highly sought after by skilled artisans, wise healers, and harsh purgers of corruption. Plasteel. The framework of the Imperium was forged in plasteel. Buildings, machines, armor, and weapons, they all require plasteel. Mechanisms. For every problem human humankind faces, it is a tool granted it by the Omnissiah. His sacred gifts are vested in the flesh of lathes and mechanisms. Spare parts and augmented augmentics. Devices and modes of transport. The forms that knowledge can take are innumerable. Promethium, that's our fuel. Highly flammable Promethium can be used not only as fuel, but also as a main ingredient in the Inquis Inquisition's pu per bleh, purifying fire. Weapons, auto pistols, lash guns, chain swords, and stubbers are all instruments of the Emperor Emperor's Fury. Blessed are the weaponsmiths, for without them there is no Imperium. Xenotech. That's heretical. Creations, eh, stay on there. Creations of the ungodly Xenos, forbidden yet tempting treasures. The twisted minds of non-humans can create wonders that are fascinating in their mysteriousness and effectiveness. Adamantine. Few substances rival adamantine when it comes to toughness. It is used in creating armor for the divine titans, hull plating for void ships, and really for everything that needs to be extremely durable and strong. Phlogiston. I haven't heard of that. Rare and priceless crystals born within flaming magma under immense pressure. Their energy potential is tremendous and fully justifies the cost of har harvesting them, measured in the lives of miners killed by irradiation. And then Profit Factor. Profit Factor is a representation of the ro relative value of the rogue trader's warrant of trade and what opportunities and resources it can call upon. Okay. So... Yeah, we don't measure our gold in like gold pieces or whatever, or credits, or whatever system 
it would use. We just have a profit factor. As we sell, then our profit factor goes up. And depending on if we have enough profit factor, we can just buy equipment. And I don't think it actually costs us a profit factor, so that's just a number that's constantly going up. There are probably some things that can drop it. But I think in general, it's just saying, this is how relatively wealthy you are. And so if you are wealthy enough, you can do things. Rather than the idea of you have, you know, 100,000 credits, you can now buy this super awesome tank, and now you have no credits anymore. I think I want to go to the main quest. Because hopefully they will give us more companions. Since we're very early on in the game, it wouldn't surprise me if there are several more companions out there that we can get. So what do we know? Can we look at our journal? Yes. Um, I don't want to see completed quests. So new blood. True losses have suffered during the cultist raid and can be re remedied on Rykad Minoris. So that's just getting more population. Machine Spirit Keeper is the Engine Seer, who I'm assuming is going to be a companion. And then the Guide is the new Navigator that I assume will also be a companion. I could be wrong about that. The last Navigator did seem very stuck in their chair. But I want to believe that this is finding new companions, these two. Because having a Tech Priest and a Navigator as part of our party sounds awesome. So, let's see. Machine Spirit Keeper and Guide. Troubling Confessions. Is that dealing with finding the Confessor? No, that's the Confessions we read. Uh, compiler out of order. Oh, I should have gone back to Choir Master Wise. Okay, we'll want to do that. Looking for trouble. Okay, so there's an interrogator somewhere. That's this quest, but it's not telling us where. It's just saying of the three main locations, you might get more information. So, Machine Spirit Keeper. So this is where the Tech Priest is. The Engine Seer. The Guide. So that's where our Navigator will be. Okay, we're going to pull back uh, from here. Let's see, what are these other... Whole damage, or whole level is 130 out of 130. This green bar doesn't seem to show anything. Oh, nope. Don't move. I was just trying to click on that radar thing, and suddenly we're moving. Fox Master Vigidus, Lord Captain, Astropathic Quiromancer Zachary Wise is asking to speak with you via a private channel. Well, I was wanting to go talk to him. Greetings, your lordship. I can report that the choir is listening tirelessly to the Immaterium in the hope of picking up voices from the dynasty's ships of or worlds. However, we have heard something horrifying instead. Amid the Immaterium's tumult, something is screaming. This screaming is driving your choir mad. Until it stops, we have no hope of contacting any of the dynasty's worlds. It is coming from the Rykad system's astropathic station. What is the nature of this scream? We do not know, your lordship, but it has brought the Immaterium to a boil. It has always been violent, roaring, roaring ocean that could spell doom to any who would consider stepping into its waters. Now, however, it has become a cradle of madness, where expelled images fuse together, twisting and cackling, before crashing into the minds of all who perceive it. A mighty warp storm, like the likes of which I cannot recall rages in the Imperium, and it fills me with terror. If this scream stops, will we be able to contact someone? I humbly hope so, your lordship. Perhaps we will manage to send a call for aid to the Von Valencius world or one of the dynasty's allies. Uh, we're going to pay a visit to that station. Thank you, your lordship. Okay, so... He's saying that until we deal with the problem here, we can't contact anyone. All right. 
Is that what this is showing? Is that there's three artificial facilities in this region? Those three, presumably? Odd. How do I back out of this? Because exit, isn't it? Uh, void ship management. Back to bridge. What is void ship management? Oh, dear. Uh, the Daring Destiny. Our components. We have engine shields, auspex, armor, arsenals. We can upgrade the hull or upgrade the ram. Cost scrap. We have a hundred scrap? Yes. Port starboard, dorsal, prow, and prow again. Vox pattern, torpedo tubes. Mizoa lance weapon. Mizoa macro cannons. Mars pattern macro battery. So these are all of our weapons. Mars pattern macro battery. Up top we have the lathe pattern 2A engine. Single void shield array. So can I replace this? Potentially. <laughs> I can take off various things. Uh, yeah. We're not going to do that. Armor. Arsenals. We have main deck. Oh, maintenance deck. I can read. Increase the flagship's hull integrity by 10. I have no components to slot into there. So... I could upgrade the hull or the ram. Increases ram damage and reduces damage suffered when ramming another void ship. Is ramming ships a common thing? So speed 11, maneuverability 3. And these are our shields. Interesting. We wanted to upgrade. Okay, so we could straight up upgrade our ship. Does it level up? Because that looks like our level up screen that we have for ourselves, like our characters. Because there are bar that's going to swing around like maybe if we get into combat in space, we gain a ship experience. I don't know. So we have Swing Run. Flagship flies in a straight line, making a full U-turn at the end of its movement. Can only be used during the acceleration phase. Wow, it sounds like ship combat's going to be crazy. Like this isn't just we park next to each other and just shoot at each other and see who's, who wins. Torpedo Control gives control of the nearest torpedo salvo, granting it five... Void movement points. Only works on torpedo salvos that were launched on another turn. Sure. And then posts. Oh dear. Supreme Commander, Master Cannoneer, Shield Master, Master of Maneuvers, Warp Channeler, and Master Etherix. So Supreme Commander needs skill required persuasion. And we need to assign an officer who has swing run in order to be able to use it. So if we assigned ourselves, obviously we are, don't have persuasion. But it is not complaining about swing run, even though it doesn't look like we have it. Let's put her there. No, still seems happy. What if we put Abelard, who clearly has swing run? Oh, that's different. I don't know what the difference is, but this one looks different. Like maybe we had basic use of swing run, but him being there allows us to upgrade it to be even better. Currently we can only use it once. And I guess our whole integrity would take damage if we used it. Oh, we have to use the ability once in order to be able to upgrade it. I don't know. We'll leave Abelard there. Uh, we don't have anyone who is trained in torpedo control. So this wants someone with demolition skill. We'll put Argenta there, I suppose. Tech use. We don't have any tech use people. Master of Maneuvers wants athletics. No one. Warp Channeler would probably be me. 
So Warp Wave is an ability we don't yet have that Adira has. So if we upgrade our ship with one of these to pick up Warp Wave, then if we had Adira as the Warp Channeler, she would be able to use it. I think I'm understanding what they're talking about. And then Master of Etherix, Awareness, this post analyzes the ship's auger and Vox systems, always watchful for traces of the warp. So if we put Adira there because she's got a 65 and an ability, then we'll put Arcel for the warp channeler. That still leaves two posts open, which is fine. I don't know if any of that matters at the moment, but there we go. Let's hop back out. We want to talk to the uh, Astropathic Choir Master, as well as the Factotum. Uh, hi, Factotum. You. Because we know you confessed as well. Hi, Factotum. Janus Danrock greets you with a cool smile and the merest hint of a bow. Pleasure to see you, Lord Captain. How may I be of assistance? Have you made a confession lately? Oh, I'd like to replace the painting of late Theodora in my chambers. Hang my portrait instead. Interesting. I did talk about that. Have you made a confession lately? Your lordship, you are truly masterful at springing unexpected questions on a man. However, I must admit, I don't quite understand this one. The orphans on the ship have already been provided with the bare essentials, have they not? The factotum fidgets nervously with the rings on his fingers until he musters the courage to reply. I will not pry into how your lordship found out about my confession. I suppose it really... It raised some questions for you. You have a good heart, it seems. I'm surprised. You are not scheming to misappropriate funds for the orphans' benefits, are you? I'm willing to allocate extra resources to provide for the orphans. Lavish spending is out of order. Concentrate on your duties. I don't want to put him down for trying to take care of orphans. If he actually cares about the orphans, I also want to take care of the orphans. So, I like this one, but I first want to do this, and I hope it'll let me choose that one as well. You have a good heart, it seems. I'm surprised. As I am told, uh, to tell the truth, sensitivity is a vice in one responsibility for ensuring the dynasty's prosperity. However, I cannot help, which is why I over unburdened my soul in conf confession. Well, I'm willing to allocate extra resources to provide for the orphans, not lavish spending. Oh, that's not telling him to do lavish spending, it's telling him not to. Uh, yeah, I'm willing to allocate extra resources to provide for the orphans. I marvel at your generosity. Will there be any specific instructions, your lordship? Make sure they get ever, get things that will bring them little moments of joy. Sweets, toys, they deserve it. Nothing extravagant. No spoiling the children. Only spend thrones on things that will keep them healthy. Food, warm clothes, and training. I do like that one. Sweets and toys, I don't... It's not the grim, dark Warham Warhammer 40k universe if you're giving all the orphans sweets and toys. Uh, educate them so they may grow up to be of greater use to the ship. Assign teachers, supply books, commend the best studies with gifts. I trust you with this ma matter. Spend as much as you deem necessary. Um, I'm torn between one and three. I don't really trust him yet. I don't know him. He does seem excessively greedy. And it wouldn't surprise me if he is stealing from us. Though, if so, I assume that uh, Lady Theodora would have had him removed by now. Or not one. Uh, I said I was torn between one and three. I'm not wanting one. Two and three. The basic necessities or education. And I'm going to go with education. I think giving them the education to move themselves up the chain where they will have better resources like, long term, if they are better educated, our ship prospers, and that should hopefully help them in the long term. I wish I could choose both. Like, they need to have the necessities, but I'm assuming they have 
the bare necessities. They have enough food, warm clothes, and training. They aren't dying. I mean, this one does include training, actually. We're gonna go with education. Better educated is always better. Particularly, we lost a ton of people. We're gonna get new people in, but those that have grown up on our ship are our best people to have, rather than just whoever we bring in that's gonna suddenly be put into positions. So yeah. Use the money to educate them the best they can be. The factotum bows his head in deference. A wise decision, your lordship. Two serfs with one shot. That is to say, it is good to know that the children will both learn to be and be rewarded for their diligence. I would like to replace... No. I will leave Theodore's portrait in my chambers for now. Just until I get the swing of things and actually feel like a real rogue trader. Like, we will look up to her image as we try and better ourselves into becoming a rogue trader, and we feel like we've got a handle on it, then maybe we'll see about replacing the portrait. Enough questions for now, I shall return later. I shall await your instructions, Lord Captain. So that's that. So let's go... way down here, so that we can go to another compartment, and go back to the Astropathic Choir. Astropathic Chapel, rather. All right. I won't tolerate weakness. Uh, I wish I'd noticed the quest log telling me to talk to him when I was here before. Your lordship, I have something for you. The choir master hands you a sheet of paper with uniform lines of machine type etched into it. Thanks to your assistance in repairing the compiler, we have been able to interpret a most curious message. It contains a call sign that agents of the renegade Voltvir used in their especially important reports. Could it be a message from Voltvir? What is, when was the signal sent? What did the message say? I will get to the bottom of that message. Uh, hopefully we can ask all of these. Could it be a message from Voltvir? He was more likely the intended recipient. When was it sent? I cannot say with certainty, your lordship. Following the repair work, I went through the text that had defied decoding before. This signal had lost its way in the bowels of the mechanism. It could be a week old or years. What does it say? Only a few words. Lilamed. 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 The DH is not a sound I am good with. I'm going to assume the H is silent, so Lilamed. Oh, oh, Jane Nathus. 11. The winds have ceased. It is done. Now, Lilamed is Voltvir's call sign for special reports, but the rest of the code we are unfamiliar with. That said, we do know where to look for the truth. The Odeinathus Ode, Ode 11 system. Okay. So, currently we're stuck where we are, but eventually we'll be able to travel through the warp. And we need to keep an eye out for that location to track Voltvir. That is super good. I will get to the bottom of that message. I have no doubt of that, your lordship. We'll speak later, Choir Master. I have business to attend to. Goodbye, your lordship. Choir Master follows you with his otherworldly gaze uh, as you leave, then turns back to the cogitator. Okay. I did not expect that to be something related to Votvir, because we definitely want to get to the bottom of that, but I assume that would be a main quest thing. So the fact that it popped up on a side quest is interesting. So, do we go to the astropathic station first to shut down the screaming? I mean, they say that they can't communicate with anywhere until we do. So I'm assuming if we tried to land at one of these other systems, it would fail. Because we can't get communications to them. So, at least that's how it's implied. So I think we are going to go... Do the astropathic station first. Even though I would love to get the various side characters that I believe 
we can find. The astropathic station is dead ahead of the void ship. It is motionless. There is lifeless si silence across the Vox frequencies. Its lights are out. Even those who have no warp sensitivity can feel the presence of death. It is here, lurking in the shadows. All of this makes reading the reports of the ship's astropaths who claim to be hearing it, an incessant ghostly howl emanating from the station all the more disturbing. Um, we don't have... It doesn't show that we have a mission there. Which is weird. So there's one thought of we can try contacting them and if there are survivors seeing what this uh, situation is. There's another thought of deploying a scouting team in the hopes that they haven't yet noticed us and then we can stealth our way in. But since the scouting team is probably going to be our party <laughs> and we're not stealthy, I'm just going to go with the uh, contact station by Vox. Station is not responding. Perhaps there's no one left who could respond. All right, then we will deploy a scouting team. As a parent, top priority is to stop the screaming. Talking about the orphans. Yeah. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. We don't know how bad off the orphans are. He's wanting to give them extra resources, but we don't know how bad their situation is or not. They're surviving, so... I don't know. Anyway, yes, let's deploy a scouting team. The enforcer enforcers offered their prayers and proceeded to enter the uncanny station. Oh, it's not us going in. What they saw inside was monstrous. Astropaths upon their thrones. Not quite here, not quite now. Smudged, as it were, across time. Servants reliving their horrible deaths uh, again and again, only to be reborn out of the ashes and blood into more agony a moment later, the warp manifested itself here, twisting the very nature of existence. The main hall was covered in a crust of psychic ice. A green-robed blind old man sat motionless upon a tall throne. He was quite literally embedded in the ice, yet he was still alive and screaming. Oh, you're talking about the choir as apparent top priorities to stop the screaming. Okay. Yes. So, gotcha. Yeah, where the astropaths are saying we can't do anything because of all the screaming we're hearing coming from this station. Then you're saying as a parent, first thing to do is to stop that screaming so that we can continue rather than just trying to ignore it. All right. Also makes sense. Okay. Uh, so crazy psychic stuff is happening in that main room. The presumably astropath, since we're talking about a robed blind man on a throne, is embedded in the psychic ice, but still alive and screaming. So we can try our lore warp, uh, which, oh, it's a plus 70 difficulty. So it's an easy check that we've already got over 100%. Send Zachary Weiss to the station with a squad of bodyguards. Oh, that... That is a very sketchy choice. He is our main astropath and sending him into a very clearly psychically charged location is bad. Could turn out terribly. But we know enough about the warp that we think this is a good idea. So we're going to try it. Succeeded because we couldn't fail. Firemaster Weiss boarded the station in person and proceeded to the choir's hall. He stood silently for hours in front of a man frozen in ice and held a telepathic conversation with him. Then Master Weiss offered a prayer to the God Emperor, and the unfortunate man passed away. Upon returning to the ship, Weiss reverently placed, uh, presented the Lord Captain with a grim trophy, the late Choir Master's amulet, taken from his frozen body after his death. Denial of nightmares. If worn by a psyker, the wearer gains immunity to the horrors of the warp effect. Uh, hello? Target suffers a minus five to weapon skill, ballistic skill, willpower, strength, and a minus one resolve per difficulty tier of the demon for one round. This amulet is painfully cold to the touch. It once belonged to an astropath who stood strong against the horrors of the warp. 
though its former owner met a terrible end, his unbend unbending will lives on in this relic. So specifically, Horrors of the Warp is related to demons, but that would protect a Psyker from being in the presence of a demon. Cool to know. The Psychic Shriek car carrying across the Immaterium has been silenced, but this has brought the crew no relief. The chilling realization came to the astropaths when they discovered that the cry was masking a different sound, one even more terrifying and surreal. It was a melody of a cataclysm born from a warp storm of titanic power, so intense that the entire expanse must be able to hear it. It muffles the astropathic message and crawls into Psyker's minds, evoking everywhere the same image, a dark, gaping, beastly mouth cleaving the universe in two. Now that the mad Acquiremancer has finally stopped screaming, the song of the Immaterium has reached the Rogue Trader's Void Ship too. Order the station to be explored. Dangerous. Burn everything. Safe but we lose treasure. Seal the station, dooming its ghostly inhabitants to an eternity of suffering. No. <laughs> like, either we think it's safe enough to explore, or it just needs to be burned. Purged with fire. You don't just leave it there waiting for someone else to open it up and explore it. Um... Order the station to be explored. A brief and chilling chronicle of the station's doom was found in the scribe's records. A warp disturbance of monstrous proportions wiped out half the choir at once, turning the astropaths into living portals through which torrents of the immaterium's energies poured out. Those who lasted longer bellowed and howled about the, a black rift that split the universe into before and after, and a darkness that would devour the astronomicon's light. It's like a beacon that helps navigators to triangulate a course for their void ships through the warp. So yes, the Astronomicon is specifically for navigators. Some immaterium en energy that's supposed to devour the Astronomicon's light? That is the Emperor. That's bad. We're not going to doom them to an eternity of suffering. If we've already explored it and found nothing else of note, burn everything. Void torpedoes shatter, shatter the fragile station. One can only hope that the unfortunate souls captured by the warp have perished along with their home. Okay. So that wasn't a big ex place to explore, which is what I expected it to be. It was just a short event. Cool enough. So do I want the Navigator, the Tech Priest, or just getting people for my ship? I think I'm going to go with the Navigator first, because this has three quests on it, which makes me think it's going to be a pretty big area. So I'd rather go here, which is hopefully going to be a smaller thing to hopefully pick up a new companion. Oh, right. Boxmaster Vigdis. We were thinking that she might be the other... Uh, confess confessional person. Though we didn't know. We didn't go back to talk to her to find out. Lord Captain, reporting. The heralds of the Navis Nobelite continue to maintain Vox Islands, perhaps due to Yurak 5 being off-limits to visitors. We intercept signals from the beacons drifting in the station's orbit. The demands are clear. We are to... We are told to turn the ship around immediately. We have also detected an accumulation of space debris near the sh station's docks. Presumably it is the remains of a interplanetary shuttles. Perhaps the esteemed Navis Nobelite house requires aid and therefore cannot respond to our Vox transmissions. So... We were told to turn the ship around immediately by... Beacons near the station. The station itself isn't uh, communicating at all. But beacons near the station are telling us to turn around. And ships that have been near the station are now debris and destroyed. So is it the station that is shooting down anyone who approaches? 
Or is there some sort of conflict there? And one faction is trying to prevent the other faction from escaping, getting aid, something or other. I don't know. Contact the station again, I will neg negotiate personally, and by that I will let Abelard negotiate for me. <laughs> Open the auger crew to scan the station. Turn back, no one dares give me orders. I mean, that's fair. We're rogue trader, we... We don't get orders except from very, very few individuals. We'll not invade a Navis Noblite station without first acquiring official approval. I mean, fair. First, use the Augur crew to scan the station. We won't necessarily go against the orders, but scan the station, see what we can learn. Yes, old captain. The Vox remains silent for a while, but then you hear static and Vigidus measured voice. The officers from the Augur crew performed a full scan of the station, but the information is imprecise. They note wave distortions of unclear genesis that are throwing off most of the readings. We were able to ascertain that the reactor core of the station is still active, and many compartments are unpowered and some fully depressurized. The signs of biological activity are largely present in the central module, which means the station has not been abandoned. So the question remains, why are the esteemed navigators' heralds ignoring us? Contact the station again. I will negotiate personally. The Vox relays the cadent sound of grinding gears and clicking tumblers. I am sorry, Lord Captain, the station does not reply even after an official greeting by a rogue trader and the declaration of your intent to negotiate in person. I mean, if they... How did they phrase it? Turn the ship... Told to turn the ship around immediately. Like, if there was something like a disease ravaging the station... And so it was like quarantined for reasons of protecting us from danger. You would think that would be in the message. So do I just board anyway? Because we could go somewhere else to get official approval. If we went to Rykad Minoris, we could probably... Talk to whoever's in charge here and get approval. But if they are in danger, which part of me is thinking they are, then the sooner we go there, the better to try and deal with the problem. We're going to dock with the station. I'm a rogue trader, even if they have standing orders that do not let anyone in for some reason. They can't turn back a rogue trader. Worst case, they have to talk to me and give me the reason. So, yeah, we're going to dock with the station and we'll deal with it from there. Affirmative, Lord Captain. We do not know what is happening at the station, so you will have to look for the esteemed navigators blind. Dock safely and may the God Emperor light your path. Yeah, we're taking everyone, of course. 